Hello there, everybody. I'm Anaji, and this is FMV Review. So today we're going to be talking about WandaVision series. I'm just going to say series because I don't think they're going to make anything past this first season. They might prove me wrong. They are Marvel. But yeah, I just wanted to kind of give my overall thoughts. I'm going to be going into certain spoilers. This is not going to be like a super nitty gritty going through each episode kind of thing. That's not what I'm going to do. I'm just going to kind of give you my views overall. And hopefully this more condensed form of a review is something you guys like more because I have been noticing that some of my reviews have been <laughs> like 20 minutes, which is not terrible. I'm not going to lie. Like my Jules part two review, which is going to come out at some point is probably going to be somewhere around that length. But I thought, let me try to do something a little more bite sized. So here we go. Let's talk about one division series. So when they initially were showing the trailers for WandaVision, I was interested just because after about a decade of Marvel doing its thing very successfully, I was looking for them to switch it up. So when they were announcing they were going to start doing TV series on Disney Plus, it did make me excited. I was hoping that Disney would do some experimentation. So when the trailer first dropped and we were seeing this like sitcom style thing and there was a sort of mystery going on, it, it I definitely was intrigued and i would definitely say that that is definitely one of the positives of wandavision is that the premise is pretty interesting this sort of sitcom mystery thing going on and it's definitely a a, a different step for marvel compared to what they've usually been doing um, but i want to get into what i think is some of the greatest strengths of this series, which is the expansion of Wanda and Vision as characters and their relationship. I would say for the most part, when it comes to Wanda and Vision, they really are background characters in terms of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. You know, they were introduced in Age of Ultron, but we didn't really get a feel for their characters. Very rarely were whole plots based around them. And it showed, it, Marvel definitely had a problem of, you have this expanded cast of characters, but your movies are only about two to two and a half hours, and you only tend to drop two movies a year. So some characters are gonna get pushed to the back, and Wanda and Vision were two characters who suffered from that. So let's go into Wanda. I definitely think this series helps to sort of flesh her out as a character, even explain some of her powers. I was sort of aware of the kind of power moves that Wanda had and the, and the movies definitely had to power her down because her, it's kind of the problem that I saw with something like why they would never introduce a character like Legion because he's just so powerful that it's hard to set up stakes when you have a character who can literally like change reality. But uh, it's not even just that. I think just you got to get a better feel for Wanda as a character because in this in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, she is at the she's there during certain pivotal like traumatic events in the marvel universe right uh her brother died uh, she is part of the reason why the civil war stuff stuff happened when she wasn't able to successfully contain a uh a bombing attack and but the series very rarely sorry not the series the movies very rarely allowed us to sort of see how wanda was dealing with that kind of stuff you know she lost her brother she's response she feels responsible for a bunch of people dying even though she was trying to prevent it and she also lost the love of her life vision in the infinity war so i'm glad that we finally got to see some of her interior world and seeing that how she's trying to deal with the trauma and this series sort of being a exploration of that it also allowed elizabeth olsen to do some good acting because she is a very really talented actress she got her start doing sort of indie dramas of course she is associated with the olsen twins but she has definitely carved her own career apart from her sisters and she's a really talented actress and it's nice to finally see marvel take more advantages of the her acting range i would definitely say that and to move on to vision i would say a lot of the same sort of positives of this series working out for the Wanda character and for Elizabeth Olsen are similar here when it comes to Paul Bettany as Vision. Vision is another one of those characters that he was introduced uh, but was not really given a lot of time to develop, especially in terms of 
you know, he's like this synthetic life form who's trying to understand humanity, but we very rarely see him struggling or dealing with it in the movies because they just don't have time for it. But now with this series, we see a vision. It, it actually kind of made me mad seeing how engaging a performer Paul Bettany is and how interesting the vision character could be once properly explored. Uh, Paul Bettany as vision of the series shows a comedic range that I didn't know he had. He's, he's really funny. He uh, He's really funny, but also Paul Bettany, when he needs to, can bring in that that gravitas and that drama into certain scenes. And in particular, I'm thinking of the episode that's sort of mimicking Full House. That ending part of that episode between uh, he and Wanda, where they're confronting each other, that was some serious dramatic stuff that I you very rarely see Marvel getting into. And I was glad that they were allowing both of these actors to explore that, but also getting an expansion on the Vision character and seeing how he does feel disconnected from humanity, but he's trying, he's still giving us the benefit of the doubt. And I, and I appreciated that kind of thing. And also lastly, when it comes to these two characters, it also was just nice to see what their romantic relationship was built on. One of the problems I've seen that Marvel has had is that, you know, when you're trying to transfer comic book storylines over to TV, you sometimes can run into problems because they're different. Sorry, not TV movies is you can run into problems, right? With comics, you get the advantage of you can put them out every month, sometimes even weekly. So you can constantly keep checking in on characters and slowly piece by piece laying the bricks down of different relationships and storylines. But the movies cannot do that. So there was instances within the movies where you would just have character relationships pop up out of nowhere, right? Uh, what comes to mind is in Age of Ultron, right? You had it where somehow Black Widow and Bruce Banner as the Hulk were now having this romantic relationship that I didn't see hinted at at all previously to that. And sometimes you kind of got that with Wanda and Vision. Now they did a little bit better of a job by having them sharing like a, like a knowing look with each other, but it is jarring to see in other movies that, oh yeah, they're like a couple now without seeing, wait, 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 how did you, how did you get to that? So it was refreshing to see that their relationship is built on them both feeling like outsiders and misfits and bonding over two people who are really trying uh, to do their best in different kind of ways. And I found that that helped a lot in sort of fleshing these characters out. Um, as I'd kind of mentioned before, one of the other things positives I would say with the series is the tonal variety that WandaVision allows Marvel to play with. You know. I'm going to get into it a little bit later, but Marvel does have a very consistent tone for better and for worse. And it's fun to see with this show that they could shake it up of playing with sitcom tropes and uh, different cinematography styles, uh, intermingling them and whatnot. I, I in particular, I'm thinking of uh, it was it surprising me how effective it was to have this sort of you know comfort food sitcom type of cinematography clashing up against more cinematic. Uh, moody kind of cinematography that would interject every now and then. Uh, and it's crazy how effective that was. And I would definitely say it works in this series favor. Now I'm going to go into what I feel. This is going to be a critique, a biggest critique of WandaVision, but it's also going to kind of be a critique of Marvel as a whole to a certain extent. And what I would say to basically sum it up really quick uh, is that Marvel's formula and its consistency is its greatest strength and weakness. So let me let me explain what I mean by that. Marvel's Marvel had quite a bit of a challenge when they were trying to do this expanded universe, right? Uh, the cinematic universe. We had never really seen something like that in film, especially on this sort of big blockbuster level of having different characters come together in one movie. Uh, this was so impactful that you can literally you can literally track when from Iron Man all the way to the first Avengers that after that first Avengers movie dropped and was a huge success, it shifted the cinematic landscape in terms of how blockbusters would produce. You saw all these different studios trying to scramble to go, holy crap, how can we capitalize on Marvel's success of, of taking all these different IPs and characters and combining them? You know what I'm saying? So Marvel has achieved quite a bit in its 12 year run. But there are some there are some downsides to that, right? Like 
the way they had to do it was you have all these disparate characters. You have this, you have this Norse god. You have this science dude in an iron suit. You have this guy who gets angry. You have this this black dude from Africa with with Wakanda technology. And to try to gel those all together, they crafted this sort of look and feel to help blend them together, which it worked very successfully. But unfortunately, because Marvel has been putting out stuff so consistently, it becomes very apparent the formula that they're using and the limitations of it. And yeah, I just wanted to say that, that that's something that has hurt Marvel. Uh, one of the other things that I think has hurt Marvel is the fact that they are trying to do this this like four quadrant filmmaking style where, and what I mean by that is uh, when you're talking about like four quadrant film, it's basically a movie or a property that can appeal to as wide of an audience as possible. Children, young adults, older adults. Um, yeah. And whatnot. And because they've done that kind of stuff, it makes it where some of the plot lines that they are adapting to film and some of their own storylines just in general lack consequence or they lessen the stakes. And what I mean in terms of like Civil War, right? Uh, spoilers for that to a certain extent. In Civil War, you have it where the heroes are fighting with each other, but there's like actual consequences there. They're having real philosophical debates with each other. And when they fight each other in that comic series, some of them are out there to kill each other. You know what I'm saying? But in the movies, they lessen it they try to lessen it by having, you know, the little scene between Black Widow and Hawkeye of like, oh, are we still friends? It depends on how hard you hit me, which is, you know, funny, but it lessens the stakes and makes it where it doesn't feel as serious, which unfortunately hurts Marvel's storytelling. After a certain point with me with Marvel, I never worried about anything too bad happening. I think that's why in Infinity War, Thanos pulling the snap off and deleting half of the Marvel universe was effective. And I think that's in part because up until that point, Marvel had never actually had any actual consequences for the heroes failing or the various decisions uh, the characters were making. And unfortunately, I do think that travels over to WandaVision. Um, and here's another thing that I'm gonna say hurts WandaVision a lot. I definitely think WandaVision is stronger in the beginning rather than the end because, and this is a problem that I've seen them have a lot of times is that Marvel will do this thing where they will plant seeds to future properties within, uh, by using another property as a launching pad. But what it does is that during the planting of these various seeds of different characters and whatnot that they're gonna set up in the future, it comes at the expense of the main story that they're telling. And if you want examples of this, of this I would say Iron Man 2 is an example of this. Age of Ultron is an example of this. And to be real, WandaVision is an example of this. As they start sliding into the back half of the season and the Marvel, the MCU sort of tone and formula starts coming in, it hurts the WandaVision storyline as the WandaVision storyline has to start bending and conforming to the Marvel formula and what I would say is a huge example of that hurting a property or the overall story of something is with the Evan Peters appearance as Quicksilver. You know, when he shows up in the series, it's a big moment because you know in the meta, in the real world that Marvel has acquired Fox and that has allowed it where they have access to the X-Men catalog that they couldn't touch before. So by putting him there, it set up expectations in the audience mind of, holy crap, are they going to introduce the X-Men? Whoa, what does this mean? And then for it to ultimately play out, like, it felt like they copped out to me that of, and of like, oh, he's not Quicksilver. And also it was a setup for a, for a dick joke, which on one level, I'm like, yeah, it's funny. But on another level, I'm like, yeah, but I will give up the joke in order to get something of actual substance. Uh, yeah. And, and what I, and what I mean by this is like, as much as you want to get on Fox in terms of maybe not doing the best with the X-Men series, you also got things out of them that are really interesting, either turn twists and turns or add depth to the stuff. Like, do you think we really got something like Logan from Marvel, a rated R 
kind of dour, serious take on, on Wolverine? I don't think so. Or something like a Deadpool, something that's meta and satirical and violent and bloody. Do you think we would really get that from a Marvel Studios? I don't really think so. So now that they've acquired Fox and whatnot, I'm hoping that they're willing to take on some of the spirit that Fox has of allowing things to not be so beholden to their formula and allow things to go off in different directions and gain new depth or new insight that they can't get with their formula uh, as of now. And ultimately, um, to wrap this review up, what it boils down to me is that with the strategy that Marvel's going with right now, their movies range from good to really good, but very rarely great. To be honest, if I were to really think about any of the Marvel movies, I very rarely would say that they've had lasting emotional impact on me or that they are are great, to be real. Like, I, I can't really think of, the, of any Marvel movies that I would say are great. And the reason I think this bothers me is that I see that they have the potential to make movies that are great, that are, and, and I don't mean this as like a knock against comic book films, but to have stuff that is deeper and longer lasting than just, wow, I saw some pretty visuals and laughed and had a good time, which there's nothing wrong with that. But if Marvel is going to be a staple of the film industry and shift the film landscape, I want them to also challenge themselves in certain ways that I don't really see them doing. And I'm hoping that one day Marvel will make good on being, of being more ambitious than just having their stuff be good. I want their stuff to be great and for them to take chances. And unfortunately, um, WandaVision kind of acts as this fork in the road where you see the struggle of them trying to reach an experiment and try different stuff, but also not skewing too far away from the formula to actually take a chance. And so with that, I'm going to give WandaVision a I'm going to give it like a low eight. I think it started off strong, but as an MCU formula came in, it diminished what they had. So hopefully with their upcoming series and the upcoming phases that they're going through, I hope that they're willing to experiment and take chances. So if you dug this review, make sure to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And yeah, let me know what you guys thought of WandaVision down in the comment below. I mean, you might have conflicting opinions with me and that's totally cool. I'd actually be really open to hearing them. And yeah, I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.